What crime could he have committed? He seemed so nice and normal. This question lingered in my mind every time I had an encounter with the men at Indianapolis Reentry Educational Facility, or well known as IREF. Sometimes I forgot I was even in a prison facility because the atmosphere in the meetings are so comforting and open-minded. When you walk through the campus, men are freely walking around, playing basketball and listening to music. If you had no idea what the facility was and you just walked through the campus, you would never have guessed you were walking past men who are felons. IREF is the beginning of change for these men. In the time that I visited IREF, it changed my life too. My experience at IREF has shown me that the criminal justice system isn't black and white like my textbook explains. Implicit bias, discretion, and the blue curtain create this gray area in the criminal justice system. People are losing years of their lives and their freedom because of gray area decisions made by officers, prosecutors, and even judges. During a Toastmasters meeting, two residents gave compelling speeches about how the prison system is failing to provide the essentials to live. One of the residents described how he fights hunger every day. The meals provided to the residents aren't filling and are very unhealthy. The constant pain of hunger builds up anger and stress for the residents, creating bigger problems. IREF is a selective facility and only certain inmates are allowed to spend their time there. As a selective facility, I expected it to be more humane than most prisons, but it isn't. The residents still face the problems that occur in prisons. Residents receive little to no health care, unhealthy meals, and no chance to become anything more than a felon. These people may be criminals and may deserve punishment, but the Eighth Amendment protects them from cruel and unusual punishment. Depriving people from the essentials to live healthy is cruel and is violating the Eighth Amendment. No textbook can provide me the knowledge I've gained at IREF about the criminal justice system. Every Toastmaster meeting was organized perfectly, very professional and impactful. Of all the speeches I've heard in my life, the speeches given by the residents at IREF were the most impactful and meaningful. One of the residents stepped out of his comfort zone and gave a speech about how he recruited young kids to go out and sell drugs. He later in his speech explained how he regrets the choice to ruin those kids' lives and how he wants to go back to his community and fix the problems he created. This speech brought tears to my eyes because it reminds me of my father and his mistakes. There is a difference between people who do wrong and continue to do wrong and people who do wrong and want to change. Giving a speech that impacts people is the greatest accomplishment in the art of speech. Toastmasters gives these men who have no voice in the community a chance to speak up for themselves and impact people for a lifetime. No matter if these men are speaking to a judge, a future employer, or even a professor, they can speak in a professional's home. These men have taught me great tips on public speaking that even my professor tried to explain and I didn't understand. One resident taught me how to properly walk while giving a speech. Another resident showed me how using different tones of voice in language help structure my speech. Toastmasters gives us both the residents and us college students the chance to learn from each other and build as great public speakers together. I came to college wanting to be a paralegal and before the semester even started I had changed my mind to a career in reentry. Spending one visit at IREF blew me away and helped me realize what my passion was in the criminal justice system. My own father was a drug addict that was selfish and was in prison most of my childhood. I've seen him struggle to change his life around and all the setbacks that he encountered as a felon. When I see men at IREF, I see my father and his journey to change his life around. I want to help these men break through all the setbacks they may encounter on their journey. I plan to create a new outlook on reentry so that society can understand not all felons are felons for life. One resident at IREF told me that the reentry system is failing and something needs to be done. And at that moment, I knew I had to change it. Another resident resident asked me, what did I want to do with my criminal justice degree? And I told him I wanted to be a reentry specialist. The resident then said, are you sure you want to do that? Because we give the specialists here hell. I explained to him how passionate I was about helping the residents change their lives. He then said, if our specialist was as passionate as you are, then our facility wouldn't be failing.
He then explained how the people that make the high up decisions don't even have an idea how to fix the problems. They just temporarily fix things. The experience at IRF has shown me my passion and my calling to help change the perspective that society has on felons. Saying IRF has changed my life may seem exaggerated, but it has. It's made me closer to my father, helped me find my true passion in life, and gave me a great deal of knowledge. Every Toastmasters meeting, at least one resident always thanks me for coming, and I always think to myself, only if they knew how thankful I am to have the chance to come. These men don't understand how much they have done for me, and they are the reason that I go to my classes every day. They motivate me to be a better person so I can make a difference in your entry. These men just need the chance to better themselves, and we must be able to offer that second chance. America is the land of second chance, and when the gates of the prison open, the path ahead shall lead to a better life. George W. Bush